Julian Epayad, who now joins us live in the studio to give us some reaction on a massive, massive victory. The heart is feeling calm now. I thought yeah. maybe it would still be going. Now he's back. He's it's, back okay. It's yeah. back to normal. Yeah. Am I the lucky charm, Julian? Am yeah. I the, every time we talk, it's good news. Yeah, I'm really happy to see you. Huh? I, I, I'm very happy it's, to see you as well. I'm very happy to see you as well. <laughs> Let's talk about tonight. Biggest paycheck of your career. How are you feeling? I feel very good. Uh, was very an objective for me this Grand Prix. Uh, the horse jump very good indoor, especially in the small arena. Uh, he win Amsterdam ring like this. So I bring him to Paris last weekend. He have one done in the Grand Prix, but jumping already is super. So yeah, it was uh, the objective. He win the qualification yesterday. So I have a good start number. Everything was okay. Um, the horse is always nice. Uh, I have only to ride uh, to to ride my best today and. Uh, and uh, the feeling was super. Can we start with the qualifier yesterday? Because that was important for today. Talk me through about your approach yesterday. You were very aggressive, very fast. Were you aiming to try and be the last man to go today? Talk to me about yesterday's Grand Prix, the qualifier. Yeah, for me, it's easier to have one more strike with this horse than one less. So the first day, I like to have a, a class very, to open a little bit the horse. Uh, it's not the classical way. Normally, normally we want to, to connect the horse, to compact the horse. But this horse is when it's spooky. The first day is a little bit small strike, and so I like to have one one class to open it. And uh, I forced to have eight strike one to two yesterday to have the, the horse with me going, going, going. And uh, okay, if I have one down the first day, I take the risk to have one down. But yeah. but uh, I prefer this way. If I do one more stroke everywhere, after the horse is, is making too much effort. So that's now I, I, I know him a little bit better. It's, it works better when I do like this. And today I only have to compact him, to collect him. And uh, OK, he is always better the second or the third day. You mentioned Amsterdam now. We spoke about Donatello and Saint Tropez. And you, you gave us great insight into Donatello. You mentioned Amsterdam. What have you been working on from Saint Tropez to now? What has been the, the work you've been doing? Yeah, after after Saint Tropez, you have one week off, very early day. My my horses live in the field. Only Flakwer sleep with his friend outside. Uh, it's not very classical, but I I do like this. And uh, one week after, little jumps, just to to keep the condition good. Uh, we arrived uh, in Paris after two weeks off. And also, no pressure, always small training in the paddock. Try to have the horse relax. When more is relaxed, better is. And uh, OK, uh, between um, Paris and here on Monday, I jump a little bit bigger at home, but not crazy. The horse just, you have to know this weekend, it's a bit more important. And uh, also in the paddock, a little bit bigger normally. And when I ask him to give everything, normally, normally is OK. If winning in Saint Tropez took the the value of Donatello up, what does the value move to now <laughs> after winning here in Monaco? What does this do for Donatello as a as a as a career move? Where does the stock value go? Yeah, I think Donatello is one of the best ten horses in the world, maybe 15. Uh, now he have much more experience. Last year already with nine was always second horse with Caracol. Jumping the, the class of the second day, he have already good result in Cannes, in a couple of shows, Lyon. And now this year is the first horse. Uh, from the start of the year, he already win, I think, three, five star Grand Prix. Uh, the horse come consistent. Uh, we have really Paris, objective Paris with the horse. So try to give him experience, but don't ask too much. We know the horse can do it, but we, are, we, we have to make less mistake possible to, to prepare this. When Harry Smolders came out, his time was 37.81. You stop at 36.54. It was 1.27 faster. When you were in the ring, did it feel that much faster? Or did you maybe worry that it was a little bit tight? No, I know my horse is very, very fast. And uh, he turned left side. Amazing. He really, I just have to do this and he turned around. So I see the run of Harry, he did 8, 1 to 2, but he don't have a super turn after number 2. I know my horse, I can do this and he turned already. Yeah. 
And after the ninth for the white, for me it's very long because you have a small strike, so I win time. Yeah. And also I think I do one less. I'm not sure, I have to see the video. Let's bring it up actually, we have the, the round the for you. Let, let's show you this <laughs> jump off, let's talk about it here because now that we have yeah. the round, I actually want you to try and talk us through it. So this is the jump off round of Zhu and FIR. Talk us through it now. Yeah, one, two, two, eight. Bit long for me, but I can break a little bit. And now my horse turn super. Don't take the first distance, so the nine come going. Ah, maybe I did 10. I think it was. And now with the splits yeah. already here, you are the massively turn, yeah. in front. The turn for the double was super. More than a second faster already with, with a yeah. couple fences to go. Did you feel uh, like you had it yeah. here already? Yeah, also here yeah, I turned Very super. Very tight, yeah. yeah. So And now the energy going through? Yeah, you go a little bit on the left. I was a bit scary to have one down on the last. But okay, a bit lucky on the last, but... Did you think it was a possibility? It. Were you fearful that it was a possibility? Yeah, I... I, I <laughs> Before I want to control the screen to be sure. Yeah. But uh, I was thinking, yeah, I, I saw the, the run of Harry and I was thinking a bit bit faster. Maybe not so much, but a little bit faster. When we spoke in Saint-Tropez, you told me you have a busy summer. We'll see you in, in a few shows and, and Monaco was one of them. Let me ask you the question again. When do we see Julian FAR back on Longines stage? Or are you going to go for three this year? <laughs> when, can, when can we see you again? Uh, Donatello will jump again in uh, La Coronia. Yeah. And uh, after La Coronia, he have a break, I think. And he will come back uh, maybe for uh, Roma. Uh, maybe one, two or three star show between, uh, between La Coronia and Roma. And uh, also the final uh, Nation Cup in uh, Barcelona. But uh, the next global is uh, Roma. Okay, before we say goodbye to Julian FAR, let's remind you what's happening with the golden ticket because the fact that he has already gone on to win his golden ticket means that that now goes to Harry Smolders. So, already, <laughs> Julian FAR will be in Prague jumping in the LGCT Super Grand Prix and now will be joined there by Harry Smolders after winning a second LGCT Grand Prix title in 2022. We look forward to seeing you again later in the year. Number two already. Maybe there's a number three. As soon as possible. As soon as possible. <laughs> Julian Abayar joined us live here on GCTV. We will see you in Acarunia. Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye.